Hi guys, welcome back to another video on Next.js 15. This is going to be a short but very important video because in this video, I'm going to explain you how you can fix hydration errors, three ways of fixing hydration error in this particular video. So what is hydration error? The error says itself, hydration failed because the server rendered HTML did not match the client. So in Next.js, whenever we render a component from server side, the HTML gets generated first of all from the server side and then then it gets generated from the client side when the ui does not match then it causes the hydration error currently i'm generating a random number this is the server side random number which is not matching with the same random number uh, which is different when it uh, got up on the browser and rendered again on the client side so currently this is the main page.tsx file next.js and this is the server component and inside this server component i have added this client component and if i open this up you can see that i have written use client and inside this use client I'm generating a random number with math dot random function and I'm just putting it up on the UI counter this if I just close it you can see that if I refresh this page this is going to re-render again and again this is going to get changed uh, locally in my development server and every time I refresh the page it is going to throw this hydration error the reason is that this random number being generated from the server side in the HTML is different from the random number which got generated when it rendered on the client side so I'm going to be using the same component for throwing an hydration error and fix this error in three different ways. So let's talk about the first method to fix this hydration error. Let me refresh. This is throwing the hydration error. So let's go over here. So first of all, whenever you have such a small component that contains one or two state variables which are generating some random numbers or it can throw the hydration error because of some unknown reasons as well. So what you can do is rather than actually generating those numbers or calculating those numbers directly in the state variables initial value let's set it zero so whenever this is going to be rendered from the server side as well as it is going to be rendered on the client side it is going to remain zero but if i want to set a random number against this particular variable later on the better way is to write a use effect and generate a random number inside it so set counter math random and this is going to be an empty array let me import this use effect and now this is going to get a random number after the client component is going to get initial render so in client component what happens is use effect does not run or execute before the initial render of this HTML in fact this return statement is going to return the HTML first and after that this use effect is going to get triggered so on both server and client side this value is going to remain zero so let me refresh this page and now you can see that the number is getting changed but this is not throwing any any hydration error so this is one quick way to fix the hydration error so now let's talk about the second method let me load up the second component this is going to contain the same code child one and you can see that this is going to throw hydration error again so rather than actually loading up this child component let me load up the second component which is child one component and this is going to throw hydration error because we are directly generating random number directly in the state variable. If I refresh this page, you can see that it is throwing the same hydration error. And this method is very important. I have seen many experienced developers use this particular method to fix hydration error because this works in all kinds of component, no matter how lengthy your client component is. So I'm not going to modify this random number generation directly here. Instead, I'm going to add a loader over here so whenever i refresh the page or i navigate from another page to this page uh, this is going to show a loader for some milliseconds and after that this is going to show a number what happens is the server side rendered number is going to be matched with the counter which is going to be visible after it is going to complete loading okay so here i'm going to generate another state variable let's add is loaded and set is loaded initially i'm setting it false and after that, I'm going to add an if condition is not loaded. So if it is not loaded, I'm going to simply return another div and inside it, I'm going to add a loading over here. But this is never going to get true. So inside the use effect, I'm going to return it true. So initially on the client side, this is going to show the loading. 
and after it is going to show the loading this is not going to return anything this which is actually showing the counter in fact this is keep on showing the loading and when it is going to return loading after that i'm going to write a use effect and inside it i'm going to set it true and when it is going to get true this is not going to get true this if condition it means that when this is loaded is going to get true if condition is going to get false this is not going to return loading in fact this is going to return this particular div so this is going to show the counter so this is not going to throw any hydration error in this case so rather than actually adding loading let me show the loading at the center of the page and let me now add this particular use effect at the top now let's go over here let's refresh you can see that as i'm refreshing the page hard refreshing it is showing the loading which is good we can actually show some kind of loader maybe gif image or some kind of animated icon over here so this is actually a good user experience and it is also avoiding any hydration error in our application so this is very effective way to actually show the loader as well as to fix the hydration error no matter how lengthy your client component is so wherever you face any hydration error in any kind of client component you can just copy paste this code and put up in that component and obviously you can modify the styling of this loading over there so now let's talk about the third method which is also quite efficient so let me first throw up the hydration error using a third component so this is going to be a child to component and it contains this code so what i'm going to do is currently if i refresh the page since this is loading the child to component that's why it is throwing the hydration error over here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to disable this particular child component to be rendered from the server side when it is going to be disabled there will no be mismatch between the html rendered from the server side versus the html rendered from the client side so for fixing it i'm not going to modify this client component instead i'm going to disable loading up this child to component from the server side so next just provide us this particular function so let me first of all import dynamic from next dynamic so now i'm going to write child to component equals to dynamic child to and this is going to give us another object inside it server side rendered ssr means server side rendered this is going to be false so i'm just going to disable this rather than actually importing child two component like this i'm going to import child two component like this over here all right so now if i save it let's go over here let's refresh this page and now you can see that hydration error is gone means i'm disabling ssr for this child two component and now if i want to show some loader before it gets complete loaded on the browser i can add loading over here and this is going to show simple loading over here so let's go over here let's refresh and now you can see that it is showing loading and obviously we can add some styling over here like text for excel and now this is going to show a loader how cool is that i don't need to modify this client component and loading up this particular child component dynamically from the parent server component and we can show the loading as well and let me know in the comments below which method you like mostly i use the second method but sometimes if the child component is too lengthy i opt for uh, loading up this particular child component dynamically from server side to actually fix these kinds of hydration error so that's pretty much it for this particular video it was short but very important video because we often face these kinds of hydration error while building applications in nextjs if you have learned something new from this video do subscribe my channel and like this video till then see you in the next video thank you so much for watching